too fun. We're back. Back here for episode, I think this is five of season two. We had a brief interruption uh, because of the Queen's death. Yep. Queen's uh, death. Queen of England. Live long live the king with his sausage fingers. Mm. Yeah. Actually, I don't mind his fingers. I look at him like he's got like like boxing glove looking hands. Yeah, they're meaty. I mean, like, I wouldn't There's, mess with them. He, like, he could he could probably throw a punch. You know, I'm not going to mess with them. Yeah, so I wouldn't no, mess with them anyways because I probably couldn't get near them. So definitely it's fun not. times. But here, we're back streaming across YouTube and the Higher Things website. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, leave us sweet uh, notes in our comments. Um, we like to see yeah, sweet I things. I like being told I look nice. I you smell know? nice. Even though you can't smell me, it's like, you can tell. He you does smell someone. nice. Do they smell bad? Do they smell nice? You can kind of yeah. see it. He, you, know? you smell good. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate yeah. that. De- appreciate definitely. Um, if you leave us negative smell. comments, <laughs> if you leave us negative comments, I'll just filter them out anyways. Yep. We don't we we don't like negativity. We don't deal with the negativity. Only Higher things is an anti negativity organization. Exactly. It's and that's the only that's also why we don't talk about politics. That's why we don't. So we're gonna talk about something heavy today. We are heavy. gonna talk about something heavy. Next two episodes will be heavier heavier episodes. Yeah, I think so. And we are going to talk about the P word. The P word. And um, no, not pietism. I know y'all were excited. I know you losers in there. Yes! Finally! Yes! They're going to go off about pietism and small group ministries. No, we're not going to do that. Uh, that's for a later episode. Probably someone boring will do that. Um, but talking about pornography. Yep. Pornography. It's, I mean, now what we're talking about today is, is well, take this. You know, our, our title is There and Back Again. That's the name mm-hmm. of our podcast. In the book, The Hobbit, which is there and back again, yep. there is a chapter where the dwarves and Bilbo go into this cave. And Gandalf makes the point, there's some places, young you know, Bilbo, you don't go. You don't go down certain paths. Yep. As we've talked before, there's certain things in culture that you may not understand, but it's not like we're going to say, don't ever do those things. Like cert- listen to certain types of music or watch a movie. But with pornography... This is something that is a, a path that you don't go down. Yeah, the dark path you do not tread down. And I think what's, in my lifetime, I'm 32. I'm not that old, believe it or not. No. Um, Lies 32? beyond your years. Yes, 32. Um, in my lifetime, I've seen it just explode. Oh, I yeah. grew up with the internet. Yep. Um, and, I mean, I remember having dial-up and getting internet, like when it was first available in homes, etc. So... I've watched it explode to where it was once the taboo thing um, that your friends watched on Saturday nights on the Scramble channels. Yep. Spice channel. Yep. yep. And, then, and then now um, it's easily accessible at the click of a mouse. Yeah, it's just there. And what we're talking about today, we're not talking about like uh, TV shows that may have a sex scene in it, mm-hmm. which we're going to get to that. We're talking today about like a pornographic site. Mm-hmm. Going to a porn site. Now, porn magazines, though, that was my thing. I remember when I was growing up, I grew up with and without the internet. Great. So I had a time where pornography was something you get a magazine. I remember actually being shown my first porn, and that is a confession time, when I was 11 years old. Yeah. It was one of my neighbors had one. His big brother had it. And we found it one day in his room, and this was like, what is this? Yeah. And the, the, there's chemicals that go off mm-hmm. in your body when, when you look at these because... God did not give our bodies to be this. He created the male and female to have an intimacy with each other. Yep. Not to have this lustful intimacy with anyone you look at. Mm -hmm. Now, you can say, well, that can happen anywhere. You can go to the gym and lust. You can go to the bakery and lust. You can go to church and lust. Yes, you can, and it it can happen there. But the pornography is a deliberate thing. Mm -hmm. And it's not a new thing. It's not like pornography only came about with Hugh Hefner. Right. You know, the guy who founded Playboy magazine. That's not like when it started. Pornography was around, it, it's been around basically since man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been here. Um, man tried hiding his nakedness, and now the devil has convinced them don't and give in to the desires. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, nowadays with pornographic sites, pornography, it's it's just there. You can go to 20 different porn sites within yeah, and, three and, minutes. And I think it's interesting... Um, the first, like the, the gut reaction, like when you say, like when I was 11, like for our generation, that was, that's young, but yeah. nowadays kids, they're exposed to it even so much even earlier. younger. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the, go ahead. I no, 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 go. No, no, the no. thing is it, 
Mm-hmm. It's my son in the background. Um, but even there, and we're going I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> it's nice to have kids around and family around. Um, because when you look at this site, it's not something you're proud of. Yep. You know, you don't like get on your phone and look at pornography when you're sitting in the second pew at church. You don't watch pornography when you're in class at school. You don't get on and watch it when you're, you know, sitting in line at Chick-fil-A or something. Right. You know, and someone's behind you, you can see it. Well, you do it secretively. Yep. You do it, and usually you'll erase your browser history. You don't want anyone to see what you did. But the thing is, that's mm-hmm. you erasing your sin because you feel that shame. Yeah, there's an innate shame yeah. that just comes with you it. You don't feel it when you're in the midst of it. When you're in the midst of it, it's some, it excites you. Mm-hmm. It gives this release in your body. But when you've done something with it, there's nothing. The devil comes with his book of iniquities mm-hmm. and says, look at what you've done. Look how disgusting you are. And, and the shame just sets in. And like Adam, we try to cover it up ourselves. Mm-hmm. But it can't be. It can only be covered up by Christ. Only his forgiveness. And it's a struggle, though. If Like if you've been watching pornography on a daily basis, you're not just going to give it up one day. It's not just like one day you're like, you know what? I'm not going to look at it anymore. Yeah. You may, but you are going to go. It's like withdrawing from drugs. Well, I mean, yeah, and I, I think that's an interesting point because... In the list of addictions, like that is very typically listed. Oh yeah, highly next to opioids and all yeah, the other it, things. Yeah, it's, it's it is up an there. Addiction, yeah. And what's who's the first person you should talk to when you know? And I, I'd say this is not a small group of people, and it's not just boys. It's mm-hmm. not just men. Women are addicted to it as well. Yeah. And it's not just something that affects the secular world either. No, no. And I think we 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 shouldn't be naive to think that this just affects. All those outside of Christendom. No. Well, it's like if I talk to a group of pastors, like, oh, I've never looked at this. I'm like, yes, you have. In some way, shape, or form, you have. It's not to justify it to say it's right. It's just the reality of what's happened. Well, I mean, it shows the fallen world, too, where um, these things have become so commonplace that, I mean, that that pastor you speak of could have been, I mean, he could have been priest him his entire life. But that doesn't necessarily mean... He hasn't encountered it in some way because it has become so ingrained in the culture. And the wickedness it brings in. I had a a father in the faith. He said one time, and this is hyperbolic, meaning he's using a a big example to make a point. He said, I'd rather have a Ouija board in my living room than a porn site on the phone in my Mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. And what he's making the point is the wickedness, the evil that comes Mm -hmm. in with it. When one demon leaves, it brings back seven more and more evil. And the thing with porn, too, is you're never satisfied with one. Yep. You enter in, it's almost like a gateway drug, and you just want more and more different types, different women, different men, different things to look at and see and image, and then it destroys relationships you have. Now every, let's say, and I'm just talking about from male to female, so every girl you meet, you're now going to think should be that girl, that woman. And especially in the midst of marriage that happens, it destroys marriages. Mm -hmm. Like, is this cheating? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you haven't gone out and slept with someone else, but you have now fantasized and made your wife into someone that she is not. That she is, yep. And you have ruined that one flesh union by doing something that only gives a few minutes of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So the first thing to do is confess like leprous men did in the Old Testament, I'm unclean. This isn't okay. Now, the world says it is. The world says, go ahead and do it. I actually had, when I was growing up, I had one of my elders at church said, this is okay to do as long as you don't get a girl pregnant. Well, and I mean... And, and I, I, I've told that story because it wasn't until I went to Christ Academy when I was 16 yeah. that I finally heard pornography is not something you should be watching. Yep. And I was like, what are you talking about? I've been told this is something... This is okay. That, as long as I don't go and get a girl pregnant, this is okay. This is a way for me to live out my lustful desires mm-hmm. and not harm anybody. And then I interact. It's like, well, I am. I'm harming myself, my own spiritual life, and every woman that now enters into my life, and that woman. Mm-hmm. I mean, that woman who's in those porn, porn videos is not a, a woman that delights in who she is and sees the love of Christ for her. Right. I think it's interesting that you point out that the world says it's okay when the world also recognizes that it can be an addiction, number one, and number right. two, that it creates all of this negativity around it. Yeah. Um, but it still pushes the narrative that it's for it's a progression of women women's rights or progression of all these things right. that's allowing it and looking at it in a good light is going forward. Yet um, we still acknowledge that all of these evils surround it, right? Um, with trafficking or with addiction yeah. and all these things. Oh, it's massive. It's like it with the trafficking. You would think what what if 
Um, I, I'm not saying abortion's good, but I almost think I would have. I would have rather they make uh, pornography illegal mm-hmm. than abortion. I, I'm not and like I'm saying. I'm not saying abortion is not a is is not a bad thing. It is a terrible thing. It's an atrocity. It's an abomination. Um, but pornography destroys so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, the wickedness, the people that destroys who are in it, the people who watch it. Um, right. There was a movie with Joseph Levin. Joseph Levin. What is Joseph Gordon Levitt? Yeah, and I can't remember. It was, Scarlett Johansson was in it. Uh, Don something. Don Juan. Don Juan. And have you seen it? Yep. It, it, the big point of it is he has a porn addiction, mm-hmm. and he starts dating Scarlett Johansson, which, and I'm not saying like for me, but you talk to a lot of guys, that's like an image of that's that's the woman they like yep. see as like oh that's I hope my future wife looks like mm-hmm. that or something, and this is who he's dating, but he still goes back to the porn all the mm-hmm. time. And she's like, why would you do that if you're with me? This doesn't make any sense. It destroys. Yep. So to confess that and say, yes, I, I, I am sinful and I'm unclean. I have this cross. Mm-hmm. That Christ has not laid on me that I've taken myself and, and taken this, this addiction. So who do you invite into it to bear it with you first is your father confessor. To actually go to confession and confess. Mm-hmm. Now you don't have to say every website you've been to. But to confess, I've done this. Mm-hmm. And to then acknowledge, I'm probably going to be back next week to do this. Yeah, again. and continue Not because I want to be. Right. But you are dealing with, it. it's literally like detoxing from the drug. Mm-hmm. To think you can do it on your own is... Yeah. Because it's a safety net, too. It's like, well, this person loves me for who I am. They don't reject me. Right. A lot of people use it because it's acceptance. Mm-hmm. There's so many things that come with it. And to bring your father confessor into it, to actually bear that with you is a key thing. Um, and then actually tell, I mean, and it's embarrassing to tell people that you, you watch it mm-hmm. because of the, the taboo that comes with it. Right. Um, the thing, how could you be so dirty, so disgusting, so lustful that you would go to something like this? And it, it's hard to, to open up about that and say, I'm struggling with it. I don't want to, I want this demon gone. Mm-hmm. And it is a demon because the moment you say, I want it gone, seven more come back. Yep. And it's just going to keep getting worse. So brothers in Christ need to... Be, and there's so many pastors that have... This has happened to them. A lot of pastors have left the ministry because they were caught with a bunch of porn on their, their computer. Or or even looked it up like at a, a, during a meeting or something. Mm-hmm. You know? It, it happens to, yeah. to pastors all the way down. It's, there, no one is safe from it. And to, to confess that... But then, unless you wanted to say something to that, I was going to add one more thing. No, no, no. Go ahead. The key thing is this, too. Look at healthy marriages. Yep. My thing is, and, and this is, I know my wife gets mad at me that I talk this freely about it. Look at marriages that the man and wife enjoy intimacy with each other. Mm-hmm. They like kissing. They like hugging. They like doing these things. Yep. That's what marriage is given for. Mm-hmm. For you to enjoy your wife or your husband yep. and delight in that. Yeah, and I think that's, that's one of those things that the youth who listen and, and the youth who have either struggled or, or fighting against this in, in their culture, in our culture, that's something for them to look for and to see as like that yeah. that good guiding light is like healthy marriages. Well, yeah. It's, I know it sounds weird, but it's like my dad likes having sex with my mom. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but what happens is it ends up getting hidden. Now, I'm not saying do things openly, but what I'm saying is it's like, oh, we don't even kiss in front of each other. We, mm-hmm. This intimacy can't... Well, now you're saying any form of intimacy is wicked. You know, it has to be the secret. So so why does pornography have to be kept secret? And real intimacy that God is God given must be kept secret. Right. No. It, it's a it's a delight to be married, to enjoy each other uh, that way. And and it's a, a prayer that I have for all the youth that God will gift them that and save them from this stuff. Yep. Um, but the key thing is to know you're forgiven in it. Did Jesus die on the cross for 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 Petey the porn addict? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He became Pete the Porn. Now, if there's a Pete watching, sorry to use your name. But um, <laughs> Pete the Porn Addict, he was on the cross, and the, the father found him, and Jesus assumed the wrath of every single porn addiction yep. is forgiven. And, and that's the thing is to see it as an addiction, something you struggle with, and that Christ has assumed it, taken care of it, drowned it in his blood, that you may now walk as a forgiven child of God, cleansed. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for that, right? It's fun times. Well, it's a heavy one. We're, we might we might get canceled. We might not be back next week. Who knows? Who knows? Goodman may cancel us. It's all right if he does. I like him. He's a cute little fella. 
So, all right, that's our episode for this week. Uh, check us out www.higherthings.org. Leave a like, leave a share, leave a subscribe. Check out our other content. We have a whole lot of exciting stuff coming out. Uh, we just decided our mid-season challenge. Yep. Um, so that, I mean, we've probably got, we are we just finished episode five. Yeah. So we've probably got a good seven or so episodes to prepare mentally to get for this. For the, for the, for the. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And I think we know what we're going to do for the end of season. Oh, the end of the season is going to be a fun time. Yeah. So it's going to be fun. I'm excited. We'll see. All right. All right. We'll see you next week. Peace out, everybody. Later. Bye-bye.